central figure for us to journey with in Holy Week is Peter, who we heard about in this narration of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ on this Palm Sunday, according to St. Luke. This is in Luke chapter 22. When Peter is called Simon by Jesus. And Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you like wheat. Satan has asked me for you to test you but when you come back jesus says you will come back to strengthen your brothers notice jesus doesn't say if you come back from this test but says when you come back there is no test in this life no problem in your life, in other words. No suffering situation that is not permitted by God for which God doesn't already have a plan of how you will come back. God already has a plan in place for you like he had in place for Peter of how you will come back from whatever situation of test you are facing in your life and you will come back stronger as Peter did. This is to keep in mind in whatever situation you are going through in your own life, that Jesus has made a promise in your life that you will come back. And he's praying for you. Notice he says, Simon, I have prayed for you. Jesus is praying for you. What does that mean? He's hoping that you will not lose your faith. Every test in this life is permitted by God. That's why we pray in the Our Father. Lead us not into temptation. The word temptation really is the word test. Anything we go through in this life is a test. What is it a test of? If we will trust that God has a plan, that it will all be fine, that you will come back. Over and over again from this reading of the Passion as I reread it to try to bring you some good news that I know you can use in your own life, we have the figure of Peter. And one thing that strikes me here is that Jesus had already changed his name to Peter from Simon, but he doesn't call him Peter. He says, Simon, Simon. Now, why would you, Jesus, call him Simon when you had already changed his name? Because Peter isn't the problem. Peter is the strong guy of faith the converted one. It's the Simon that's the problem. And let me tell you something today. You've got a Simon in you as well that is trying to pull you back to your old way of life before you met Jesus. It's trying to pull you back into the life of, oh, what's going to happen? Poor me. I won't make it through this. It's trying to pull you back into your former way of life. That's where you need to have Peter kick in. To say, no, get behind me, Satan. And if there's any test in my life, I'm going to come out okay from this test. It will all be fine. I will make it. It'll be just fine. This is the one thing I want to bring to you during this Palm Sunday as we heard the passion that Jesus said to Peter, 
not if you will come back, but when you will come back. I kept this in mind as my father was in the hospital with his acute pancreatitis and other things. That Jesus made a promise that you will come back. So what is it that you know you're facing in your own life today? Whatever situation for you to keep that in mind as well. That it's not if, but when. And not in my time, but in God's time. And what doesn't kill me in this life only makes me stronger. And that I will come back. And I will come back stronger. I'm keeping this in mind very well right now, not just with the whole situation with my father. And he has come back stronger. He's no longer uh, eating fatty foods. He's not drinking any more alcohol. Mm, no more vodka. He was told many times before, you cannot have any vodka. You know, you need to lay off the Polish sausage with the lard in there and all sorts of... Uh, you have to lose weight and he didn't listen so it happened he ended up in the hospital and now he's on a straight diet and he's drinking water <laughs> finally huh? there's nothing that happens in this life that isn't permitted by God for our own good He's coming back stronger. And I'm keeping this in mind as I see my family in the Ukraine. Because you know that I have family in the Ukraine that were left behind after the Second World War. My grandparents moved to what is now Poland, but before the Second World War, it was Poland in the part of Ukraine where they were born and where they came from. And after the Second World War, the map of Europe was redrawn. And so they moved to what used to be Germany, but is now Poland. It's a mess, okay. It was a mess before and it's, uh, it's a mess now. And I'm keeping this in mind as there are 2.5 million refugees in Poland alone that for some reason, God is permitting this because God is all powerful. God could end this like this. You know, God could take care of Putin like this. But he's not. Why? Because there's something happening. Historically, I grew up hearing about how horrible the Ukrainians were. In fact, Ukrainse, and Kasia knows, that's a very, she's here, that she knows, that's the Ukrainians in Polish, that's a very derogatory term, okay? for Polish ears because of historical things, animosity between the two people, between Poles and Ukrainians, historic stuff. And now in Poland, the 2.5 million refugees are not being housed in shelters. The Polish people are opening their doors, including my family. And the refugees, the Ukrainians, historical enemies are now welcomed into Polish homes and are seated around Polish tables. God has a purpose to allowing everything and anything. We just have to trust. There's great miracles happening even in the midst of war. God knows why things are permitted to happen. We just have to trust. It's great miracles happening even in the midst of so much suffering. And one of those is the healing between peoples. And we will come back. 
This is my attitude, and that's why I'm telling my family members that we will come back stronger. Not if we will come back, but we will come back. And when we will come back, we will show and we will strengthen our brothers in the world. Hmm? But when the Ukrainian people and the Polish people come back together from this, we'll be stronger. And that's a message for you in the midst of anything that, because you've got a war going on in your own life. I mean, I don't have to get into it. You know what that is. And then whatever uh, uh, sickness situation, family situation, marital situation, whatever, you know, you've got your own, you've got your own war. Stop looking for war over there in Europe, okay? Look at your own life. Depression, anxiety, fears, all this going on. But it's not if you will come back, but when you will come back. And you will come back. God, this is this is str struck me today. There's, a, there's another thing that the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. I said, you know, I, this is one phrase that goes on my refrigerator you know, from this week. That God wouldn't allow any test for which he already already doesn't have a plan for how I will come back from that. Because that's the God that I serve. I think that's some good news, isn't it? That I think we can all use. Hmm? And as I look out, you know, there's somebody just coming in in a, in a wheelchair, a young person. We have a few people. There's a lot. You, you, you've all got your tests, every single person. And we come and listen. And, and I'm really focusing this Holy Week on Peter. I'm, he, he's accompanying me this Holy Week, Peter, hmm? who came back. And he came back stronger. And so will I, and so will you. I've come back before, and I will come back again, as Peter did. So walk this Holy Week with Peter. I want to see each and every one of you here on Holy Thursday. Okay? We have Mass of the Lord's Supper with the washing of the feet at 4 p.m. this coming Thursday in English and in Spanish at 7 p.m. 4 p.m. in English and 7 p.m. Those of you you already know because you've been contacted who will have your feet washed by me on Thursday. Wash your feet beforehand. <laughs> and please, if you've got fungus or bunions or other things, please, okay? Because there's some people, I'm being very serious. There's some people, and this happened to me, who they think that, you know, me washing their feet, blessing their feet, kissing their feet is going to get rid of their fungus. No, okay? <laughs> Go to the podiatrist. <laughs> I'm not it. <laughs> if you've got feet issues, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's every year you sh it, it happens I'm like I need a, a, something for my nose <laughs> but I want to see all of you here on, thir on Thursday There's always ha we have to have humor in the midst of everything this was supposed to be a, a very serious sermon but uh you know, we have to inject some <laughs> humor into it. Uh, and I want to see all of you on Thursday for uh, the Mass of the Lord's Supper in English at 4 and in Spanish at 7. Okay? Do me a favor this week also. Go shopping, everybody, to your favorite store where you do your shopping and get some Easter lilies. And bring them, please. We need Easter lilies to decorate on Saturday. Okay? Uh, so please bring us some Easter lilies. Familiarize yourself with the Holy Week schedule. On Friday, we will also have 
the English uh, service of the Lord's Passion at four o'clock. And in Spanish, there you go. You've got the uh, slides in Spanish at 12 and at seven. In the Chaplet and Novena of Divine Mercy, bilingual at three o'clock. So familiarize yourself. And then Holy Saturday, next Saturday, blessing of the Easter baskets at one o'clock. So color your eggs, bring your foods and make a nice basket and bring them at one o'clock. And at four o'clock, we have the Easter vigil in English with the blessing of water, fire, incense, and uh, the Holy Easter candle. And at seven in Spanish. And then of course, uh, next Sunday, the 17th is Easter. So familiarize yourself with the Holy Week schedule as we walk this week with Jesus. Don't let him walk alone. Be here, okay? Uh, those are great, great liturgies uh, to strengthen our faith. Take the palms home. Place them in your home. Did you, you heard the initial blessing of the palms that I did in the beginning and the palms are symbols of goodness meekness and justice and the palms are a symbol of the our victory over evil that no evil will ever have you Jesus has you place that palm right there and then when it dries up make a uh, make ashes out of them and spread them all around, okay? Beautiful, powerful, sacramental symbols in our faith of the power of God, not the power of evil. I'm praying for each and every one of you this Holy Week, and I'm very thankful that you are here today, as always, as we continue our walk with the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I look forward to seeing all of you. Tomorrow also we have Mass in English at 11 and Mass in Spanish at 9, at 1, at 3, and at 5. And I have palms all day. And we're giving away palms all day. Free, free palms. Free, very important. Palms are free to, for everybody. I don't want to be like in one of the previous parishes I was at. The priest announced that there was going to be free coffee. So everybody's all excited. You know, there's free coffee because that was one of the parishes where there, nothing was free. You know, and he says there's free coffee. But what he didn't tell the parishioners was that he was going to charge one dollar for the cups. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>